home of redeemed souls. Heaven is a permanent place. No enemy will ever conquer the paradise of God. There will be no crumbling of its buildings, no decay of its materials, no withering or dying of its vegetation. No smog or radiation will ever pollute its holy atmosphere. This permanent abiding place is an eternal continuing city. We sing this song written by Haiti Buell. A tent or a cottage, why do I care? They are building a palace for me over there. Though exiled from him, yet still I may sing. Oh, glory to God, I am a child of the King. In that incomparable place, saints will find sweet deliverance from all disappointments, heartaches, tragedies, and disasters. There will be no more sorrow or war. There will be no more pain. There will be no more crying. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. This is Revelation 21, verse 4. The joyful citizens I saw in heaven seem to have come from many different ages and countries. Various nationalities seemed obvious to me. Then I remembered another scripture I had read. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Revelation 5 verse 9 Employed in praising God Excitedly, my soul praised the majesty of God. The sorrows I experienced and the grief I suffered when I saw a revelation of hell now seemed far away there was a revelation of heaven i saw entire families together everybody was happy going somewhere doing something smiling a glow graced every face i saw all the saints in heaven seemed to be occupied they were constantly busy. They spent their time praising and magnifying God. Songs were on everyone's lips. The atmosphere of music was the dominant mood. Eternity will not be spent in leisure and laziness, as some have mistakenly pictured of our final destination. We will do more than float on a cloud, strum a harp, or we go our toes in the river of life. Our time will be occupied in service to God. Just what the nature of this service will be, we cannot say, but there can be no doubt that his people will save him. Diamonds for soul winners. I could see diamonds glittering, glistening, exquisite diamonds, diamonds everywhere. Some were as large as blocks of concrete. Some of these diamonds seemed to be for the mansions of people who were soul winners on earth. It seemed that every time someone led a soul to Christ, 
heaven provided a diamond for that faithful Christian. The Bible says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Proverbs 11 verse 30 Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the feminine, and those who turn many to righteousness are like the stars forever and ever. Daniel 12 verse 3 as I stood drinking in the splendor and grandeur of that glorious place, I saw an immense beautiful angel coming down a path. In his hands he held a scroll which had gold edging on it. The angel laid the scroll on a pedestal table which was made of a silvery material unlike anything I've ever seen before. The oblong table literally glistened with light. The scroll had a name written on it. One of the saints picked it up and began to read it. Jesus is the master builder, a saint in heaven told me. He determines who deserves the diamonds and where they go. This scroll I hold is a report from earth of a person who has led someone to Jesus, who fed the poor, who clothed the naked, who did great things for God. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him he will sit on the throne of his glory the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats he will set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did you see you sick or in prison and come to you? The king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cast into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And these will go into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life matthew 25 verse 31 to 41 and verse 46 room for everybody the angel repeated the welcome theme to me come and see the glory of your god at the lord's direction I am recording this account of heaven as I saw it. We need to understand that the focus of our hopes and desires should be to spend all eternity with our Lord. Heaven is the land of dreams come true. 
I am excited about heaven because after our works and labors on earth are finished, we will leave this earth and go there. God has prepared the city and Jesus is preparing a place there for those of us who love him. Perfect communion. Unbroken fellowship with God and men will be completely restored in heaven. When Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, God paid visits to this earth after fellowship with him was broken by sin and disobedience. God continued to show his desire for communion with mankind. His ultimate expression of love for mankind was the giving of his own son to die a merciless death on a cruel cross. Through Christ's death and resurrection, fellowship between God and man again became a possibility. Even now, the circumstances of life can hinder our intimate fellowship with God. But in heaven, there will be no more hindrances. We will know perfect fellowship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Fellowship with him will be complete. Heaven is the abode of the living God. It is far above the atmospheric heavens and beyond the planets and galaxies. It is the everlasting home of the redeemed of the Lord. Isaiah 62 verse 12. It is the eternal destination of all the children of God through faith in Christ. You do not need to fear being crowded into a tiny cubicle in heaven that has been labeled a mansion. When the redeemed of the ages are gathered home to glory, there will be sufficient room for all of them to have one of the many mansions, the many dwelling places which Jesus said he was preparing for us in his father's house. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way, you know. John 14, verse 1 to 4. Heaven definitely has a room for everyone. After these things, I looked and behold... A great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb, all the angels stood around the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 to 11.